So granted, TNS have a game in hand, but going into October, we're top of the league. I'll come back to the FM24 adventure where I try, probably in vain, to reach a European final only managing clubs from nations that have never produced a European finalist before and in Season 2 with our team Haverford where Season 3 of our journeyman adventure in total, things are going rather well. It's not a perfect unblemished record. We've drawn some games, in fact three games in the league so far. And I was a little bit concerned earlier on in the season that actually we might not have the right tactic to try and challenge TNS or the new solutions, Total Network Saints. I'm still getting picked up on pronouncing that team name wrong. But I was concerned that we weren't going to be able to challenge them when we dropped points in three of our first, what, six games. But since then, we've looked pretty strong. We've progressed in both of the cup competitions. We're scoring goals for fun, which, of course, is code for not being able to score in today's match. But we have looked pretty good. You saw us in our last episode absolutely crush Cardiff Met University 6-1. We played Total Network Saints in the very next fixture, and it was far more even than any of our encounters have been with them previously. We did go behind in this game, and we made a pretty sticky start, in all honesty. But Ellie Golding made it 1-1 before half time. And in terms of the XG and the chances created and the shots that we had, it was pretty even. And if anything, we finished the game stronger. We had the lion's share of possession. In fact, better performances from two of our front four. And we might have even nicked this game. We have then also put in some pretty big results. We beat Carnarf and 4-0. Another 1-1 draw before we beat... What is apparently not Penny Bont 4 0, it's Pen Your Bont or something closer to that. Then we had a really disappointing 2 2 draw with Colwyn Bay because they had not made a strong start to the season before we made progress in the Welsh Cup. Beat Airbus 3 2, beat Seven Sisters 5 0, Britain Ferries 5 3 before we played Ponty Prid in our most recent league game. And we won 2 0. But there is a little caveat with all of these results in that I played these fixtures over a week and a half ago before a little jaunt to Europe where I got stranded and struggled to get home in time for Christmas. So I'm a little bit rusty, not entirely sure about our team anymore. I've got to try and refresh and remind myself who has been playing well before we take on Newtown today. So we're just going to play the one fixture today. I'm actually recording this on Christmas Day, even though it's going out on Boxing Day. And I'm going to try and squeeze in a quick game before I missed. One thing that you will remember from our last episode is that we had a lot of unhappy players because of my mismanagement of European registration. Well, we've only got one player that's still unhappy. That's Harry Brook. But he was the last to throw his toys out of the pram. So I'm thinking, last toys out, last toys back in again. Because we had a message in our inbox recently to say that Remy Savage is no longer wanting to leave the club. He's let his issues drop. In fact, as we get a little closer to Christmas, we might try and get some of these players that were unhappy to commit to a second season at the club. I'm not sure whether we will be here necessarily for a second season. I've been reading lots of comments while I've been away saying, well, do you know what? There's probably bigger challenges out there. Maybe a second season in Wales is enough. And you never know. A second season might be enough to mount a title challenge. I think it's going to be very tough to get close to TNS this season. Yet again, they've started unbeaten, even though they've drawn two of their seven games. So they're not infallible. One of those draws came against us. We've got another fixture coming up against them pretty soon. If we could actually register a win their first defeat in more than two seasons of football, it could be game on, but I have a feeling we're going to come up just short this season. I think we could be good for qualifying for Europe once more, but I think it could be a three, four, maybe even five-year challenge to try and catch TNS. Got to remember, Haverford Quest are going to be turning professional, but not until the end of this season. Whether we'll still be around for that, I am not entirely sure. In our games recently, we have had some incredibly good performances and we've had some very disappointing performers as well. And one of them, I'm afraid, is Sam Mather. Now, don't let his recent form in the last three games fool you. Two of those were cup games against lower league sides. If you have a look at his average rating in the league, 
He's only averaging a 6.89, two goals and one assist. His goal involvements have been seriously down on what they were last campaign because of his disgruntlement at wanting to move to a bigger club. And up front, the player that we had high, high, high hopes for, as Panic at the Disco would say, Oakley Cannoneer. Well, he's been very hit and miss. He's like the grand old Duke of York. When he's up, he's up. But when he's down, my goodness, is he down. He's a one in two man, four in eight. But at this level and with those attributes, I would have expected him to be a goal every game kind of player. And it really is high time that he was registered a little bit of consistency and fired us towards a title challenge. But the other two players in our front four have been much more effective. Diamond Edwards is now up to five assists in just seven starts in the league and is our main creative force. And Golding, who I'm playing as a playmaker and I hope would register lots of assists as well, where it's actually as a goal scorer where he's been more of a threat despite finishing of just eight. He's managed to notch five goals. That's more than our striker in the eight games that he's appeared in so far. However, somebody down in the comments said, I think your best player may well be Harry Brooks. And my goodness, I think they were right. Seven appearances in the league, four goals, three assists, an average rating of above a 7.5. And fortunately, he was injured for our last game, has still got a bit of a knock for this. And he's only going to be fit enough for the bench, which is a blow because it means we don't have as strong a cover to bring in. Bev Bevan is going to deputize today. Bev Bevan, by the way, has not made a single start in the league so far this season. And there's a bit of a drop off between Brook and Bevan. So we'll see how Bev gets on today. And we're playing in midfield alongside Tom Holland, another player that we've brought into the club that is not averaging above a seven. So we certainly don't have the strength in depth that our mates over at Total New Saints seem to have. But we're hoping that it's going to be strong enough to beat a new town side today who are currently sitting fourth in the table. So they are going to be a test for us, I would say. They've lost three games, but they've won four. They sit on 13 points, but we need a win today to make sure that we keep up our momentum at the top of the table and just keep the pressure on. Total Network Saints. So hopefully we will have enough about us today to be able to beat Newtown. It's an away game, which gives it that little bit more complexity. But we have been free scoring in our recent fixtures. We'd like to keep that up today. And we'd like to see Oakley Cannonier really start to well, just cement his authority as one of the top strikers in the division as he comes in early. And within 14 minutes, he does just that. Ellie Golding squares the ball across, but it's actually ruled out for offside. And Cannonier is denied that early goal. We worked the opening pretty nicely there, I thought, but either Cannoneer or perhaps Golding went too early. And now we're approaching the 30-minute mark and we're still looking for that opening. This time, Cannoneer finds the back of the net. I think the flag is up again. He's looking dangerous, but that's two goals disallowed for the cannon inside the opening half an hour. But undeterred, we come forward again, Witcherly. Falls on the ball. This is another very thin or narrow pitch in Wales. We've come up against a few of those, I think. And here is Davies for our opponents. Trying to get in behind our defence. The beach is there. He's been rock solid so far this season, by the way. Into Jonathan Pye. And now Cannoneer goes in search of that opening goal. And surely the linesman is not going to deny him on this occasion. He's looked lively this afternoon. That's his hat trick, except the first two of them were offside. TNS are already 3 0 up in their game. You might just have spotted on screen. It's just a league where you cannot blink. We have to win every single game because you cannot bank on the new solutions dropping any points whatsoever. I quite like the relentless nature of this league. It really does make it quite the challenge as they come down with Toady. And they've had a shot of their own through McGonagall that's gone over the bar. We need a second goal in this game just to try and make sure that we are comfortable. We've only had three shots and one of them on target. 
apart from the two disallowed goals. So it's not like we've really dominated this game and our opponents are searching for an equaliser just before half-time. The Salford Messi pounces on the halfway line though, gets the ball to Cannoneer and here is the diamond and he's in and he has scored. What a return we are seeing from the diamond. Normally it's assists. On this occasion, he's finding the side netting and Cannoneer turns provider. It's a delicious little ball that absolutely dissects the Newtown defence. And that is a finish that would not look out of place in League 2. I would say I think some of the players that we've managed to sign for Haverford West could definitely play league football, but luckily for us, they're playing in the Welsh top flight. So during this second half, just keep an eye on Sam Mather. He's on his customary 6.6. .6, and because his morale is a little bit down, he is really not performing very well. He's decided that he's going to consider his options at the end of his contract. Um, until then. He really does seem to have downed tools a little as he's clattered by Tinsdale. And Golding, right at the start of this half, has a free kick that he gives to Mather. And now Tom Holland, little effort outside of the foot there, goalkeeper claims. Patrick Gamble just seems to be struggling for a little bit of fitness, which is not an easy replacement for us to make. Mather, well, he experiments with a 6.7 before falling back down to a 6.6. Jonathan Pye gets the ball to Mather. Golding sends one over the bar. We're huffing and puffing a little without really being ruthless in our attacks. And I reckon on 65 minutes, we're going to see whether we need to freshen things up. And to do that, we're going to bring Andy Spain on at right back. More of a centre half, really. But we'll see how he does. He is an inverted fullback after all. And we're taking Sam Mather off. How the mighty have fallen. He's the first player to get hooked these days. And in place of him, we're going to bring on Kean Kinsella, who has been a little bit unlucky to miss out on some football this season. He was doing very well for his last campaign, tailed off during the second half of it. And now I think we've brought in stronger players that are just limiting his opportunities. But we'll see whether he can get involved today as Pai sends in a corner. There is Spain with his first touch since coming on. And Bev Bevan has a strike. Pai's back out to it. Goes all the way back to Cannonier. So small that even though he's a striker, we send back for the corners, apparently. And now, David Davis to Jonathan Davis, all the way back to Watts. And is this going to be the chance that our opponents need to get their way back into the game? Indeed it is. 2-0 is a fragile lead indeed because we've let the next goal in. And now we're not looking quite so confident about securing these three points whatsoever. It's just a ball over the top of our defence. McGonagall places it on the volley past the beach. And now, well, we really are in need of a third goal. Otherwise, could be dropping points in this game. This one's ruled onside. We've had two disallowed that look pretty similar to that to me. But, hey, I'm a little bit biased. And with 75 minutes, I think we'll look to try and make some more changes. Could we get the third goal of the game before then? It's all the way back with Mon Louis to Spain. It's a... A little interchange of passes between the two. And now Holland's going to try and get us playing forward. And here is Kean Kinsella. And he has struck it down into the ground. It's bounced past the keeper. But once again, it's a third goal of the game that's been ruled out. In January, I dearly would like to add a little bit more depth to this squad. I'm still waiting for that striker with the electric pace to show any kind of interest in negotiating a contract. That might not happen at all this season. We've just brought on Akpan on the wing for Diamond Edwards. Akpan's another player that performed well last season that I think has been unlucky not to get more game time. This, we're going to try and use him to see whether we can see out this 2-1 victory with 12 minutes remaining. And there is Akpan, two cannon here, and they can't rule that one out, surely. If all of our goals had counted today, we'd have hit six again. So I guess we're looking pretty ruthless. This is good closing down by Akpan. I guess that's the benefit of having fresh legs on the pitch. We are now 3-1 up. That should secure the points for us. But again, we might fall behind TNS in terms of goal difference as they look to be rattling in the goals in their game. Akpan comes forward once more. Witchley claims it. And we're going in search of a fourth that would just make this scoreline Look pretty comprehensive. Mon Louis mops up at the back. 
Holland turns on the ball, gives it back to Pai. Here is Ellie Golding dropping deep as the playmaker. Bev Bevan's forward now. Akpan's look incredibly lively since joining the action. Cannonier probably should have tucked that one away as he scurries back to the halfway line for his defensive corner duties. We sling one into the near post. On that occasion, it was a poor delivery hits the first man, the one thing they always tell you to avoid. But we come forward once more. It's Key and Kinsella. A little bit of jinking, a bit of trickery. Earlier he had a goal disallowed. They're not chalking that one out. We have made it 4-1. And I think now we're looking pretty comfortable. Comfortable enough that we can make a final couple of changes. We're going to bring Bobby Mack on for Golding. Bobby Mack can't really play that role very well. Don't want to take Cannoneer off when they're on a hat trick. As that always seems to upset players. We really need to take Tom Holland off. But the only midfielder we have on the bench is Brooke. Maybe we could try and shuffle things around and play O'Reilly as a ball-winning midfielder, even though really they're not that accustomed to playing that kind of role. The needs must, and we're going to give players a rest. As at 4-1, even I'm fairly confident that we might pick up a point. As Gordon Cowan sends the ball forward, Sodi's on the ball. This is a kickoff highlight. Cowan's is instrumental in the middle, nicking it all together, and Jonathan Davis is in. And maybe I was going a bit early calling the game at 4-1 because they've pulled yet another back. The beach is trying to time waste back there. Good on him for that. Gordon Cowens is pulling all the strings in the midfield. It's another ball over the top. Maybe our line is a little high at times. That's twice we've been done by that ball that just spins over the top of our centre-backs. They break our offside trap. And the beach is left with one-on-one -on -one opportunities. We'll keep the substitutions that we've made. We'll try and just see out the game. Maybe out a fifth from a corner. Here's Pai. Going to go to the far post, I think, with this one. And Mon Louis just escapes the attentions of his marker and does head past the goalkeeper. That is five. We are looking ruthless. But defensively, well, we play in a way that's always going to give the opposition chances. And so that certainly proved this afternoon. You can see by the tiredness of some of those defenders, we do need the reinforcements. I'd like to add three more of a similar quality to players like Matha, Mon Louis, Savage to come and play for us during the second half of the season. That given the number of goals that we had disallowed, I think going forward, we're looking good. But when we win 5-2, TNS win 4-0 and trying to create any kind of gap between us and them is a very difficult task in Wales. Let me assure you, we're going to go away and play another bunch of games when we come back. As much as half of the season will be completed, will we still be top of the table? Probably not, but we're going to give it our best go in Haverford Quest.